Hello and welcome to another episode for the podcast, Sacred Sobriety, A Path for the Soul. I'm your host, Timothy Berman, here again to hopefully inspire you, empower you, and edify you as we are on this journey as fellow travelers through the recovery process, living in sobriety, pressing forward with steadfast faith in Jesus Christ who is our Redeemer and Savior. And it is the rock of our foundation that we continue to seek after, for he is, as the psalmist says, our refuge and our fortress. Especially in those times that we need to rely on him and we need to have a sure footing as we traverse the path of recovery, as we continue to strive to maintain sobriety, And as we are moving towards spiritual perfection in our lives, growing from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from truth to truth, and learning from learning line upon line, precept upon precept. And today is something that is very interesting that I want to bring to your attention, something that I have just learned myself when I was going through and meditating and thinking on the things of God and thinking on the scriptures and where I'm at in my own recovery and my own walk. And it is the idea of renunciation. And I didn't think about this until I came across this, that when we are denying ourselves, according to Matthew 16, 24, what we are really doing is we are renunciating We are renouncing our previous beliefs. We're renouncing all of the hurts and pains that we have growth, that we have experienced. We're renouncing our allegiances. We're renouncing our patriotisms, and we are renouncing our previous lives. Now, this isn't something that happens in one moment. It's not something that happens in that one space when we come to faith when we have that spiritual awakening when we have the insights to understand where we are this is a process of our spiritual growth that things are going to come up into our lives the holy spirit is going to bring things up into our hearts and minds that we need to struggle through that we need to wrestle with in order to renounce them and so renunciation which is a core aspect of the christian journey isn't merely about giving things up it's about shedding the layers that keep us from genuine growth and healing for those of us grappling with addiction codependency or the shadows of family dysfunction because this act of letting go may lead to profound transformation we often find ourselves held back by remnants of our old lives through the christian lens renunciation means facing these barriers head on As we navigate our path to recovery and healing, embracing this principle offers a chance to rebuild it with intention. It's not about abandoning who we are, but about discovering who we may become. Through this podcast episode, my hope is to help you explore how the spiritual discipline may enrich your own lives, helping you move beyond survival towards thriving in sobriety and faith. And so let's explore how renunciation may be the key to unlocking our true potential as we press forward with steadfastness of faith through Jesus Christ.
All right, let's get into our message for today, our devotional, and learn how to take these principles and apply them into our lives as we are fellow travelers in recovery on the road to living in sobriety and pressing forward with steadfastness in faith through Jesus Christ. And again, this is coming from Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest. And as you've heard me say this before, it is probably one of the best devotionals, I believe, that helps generate and inspire a way to live out a true Christian discipleship through faith in Jesus Christ. And so this is based off of Luke 9.57, and it's one of those scripture passages I kind of, you know, you read over some of these and you're like, I don't really understand it. And um, and so we just kind of read over it and and just not really give any understanding towards what is being conveyed. And this is one of those many verses that I find that I've later come to truly understand and appreciate. And here's what Luke 9.57 says. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And so, you know, it seems simple and straightforward, you know, because that's what Christ is calling us to do is he wants us, he invites us all to come and follow after him, that we are willing to follow wherever Christ is directing us to go. And as we are aligning ourselves to the will and care of God, as we understand him, we are willing to be open to the opportunities that is going to be presented for us to walk through. However, there's something unique about this. And here is what the devotional says for today on Luke 9.57. When the man in this verse proclaimed his intention to follow Jesus, our Lord's response was one of severe discouragement. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Luke 9.58 We might be we might find it baffling that Jesus would pass up the opportunity to win a follower. We might think it cruel that he would freeze the man's desires and send him away discouraged. But Jesus knew what lies in the human heart. Never apologize for your Lord, not even when his words hurt and offend until there's nothing left to hurt and offend. Christ Jesus has no tenderness toward anything that is ultimately going to ruin someone in his service. His responses aren't capricious or thoughtless. They are based on his knowledge of what lies inside men and women. If the Spirit of God brings a word of the Lord to your mind and it hurts you, you may be sure there's something inside you he wants to hurt to death. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus' words put a stop to the idea that I can serve him because it's pleasing to me. If I serve him, I can't count on having the usual comforts. I must accept that there will be nothing but my Lord and myself and a forlorn hope. Your loaded star, Jesus is saying, must be your relationship to me, and I have nowhere to lay my head. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Verse 61. The person who says to the Lord, yes, but, is the one who is fiercely ready but never goes. The, exact, the exacting call of Jesus has no margin for goodbyes. When the call of God comes to you, go at once and never stop going. That is interesting to think about. And it is actually Luke 9.58 where I was struggling with over the years to really co- understand and comprehend. And putting it in a recovery context i can see where this idea comes into play i can see where this is because if we are willing to turn our lives and will over to the care of our heavenly father as we understand him in that moment and that moment of despair and that moment of of where we are experiencing his saving grace Christ has to come, and this brings to mind uh, where Christ goes and he cleanses the temple. He overturns the tables, he flips the tables, and he chases out the the um, the money changers. And he says that you've turned my house into a den of thieves. 
well that's what christ is wanting to do that's what i'm seeing here it is being expressed in a different way that when we come to christ and we give our lives and hearts and minds over to the will and care of god he's going to come in he's going to flip everything over he's going to chase out the things that don't belong in there and so he's in a sense going to be cleansing us to where we are experiencing the healing balm of the infinite atonement that we're going to be experiencing the forgiveness we stand in need of but first we have to clear out the rub rubbish we have to get rid of the garbage we have to renounce all of that stuff so when we commit ourselves over to the care of god it, when we commit ourselves to following christ we have to be willing to take and renounce those things that have brought us to that point and so that's what i'm seeing that this is saying and it just is exciting it, it it's comforting and it's fearful you know because we're holding on to these things we're holding on to our resentments we're holding on to our bitterness we're holding on to our hurts and our pains and our dysfunctions because we don't know how to live outside of that and when we say i want to follow you jesus i want to follow you and I want to do according to your will. Well, we need to make sure that we're committed to renounce those things. We need to make sure that we're in a position to renounce all that pain and suffering we've endured. We need to make sure that we are in a place where we are ready to let go of those things. Because if we're not, Christ has no place in us to help us grow. And it creates a barrier to what lays ahead for us. And so let's go ahead and get into this. And hopefully you will find this, again, inspiring, empowering, and edifying. And so what do, I mean by under, what do I mean by renunciation? How do we understand what this uh, aspect is? Well, renunciation is more than simply giving things up. It's about finding freedom from the hold possessions and desires have on us. In a spiritual context, renunciation is the practice of letting go of the material and emotional attachments that prevent us from truly following Christ. For those in recovery, it means surrendering harmful habits and dependencies to embrace a life of healing and spiritual growth. It's a powerful tool that helps us break free from the chains of addiction, codependency, and dysfunction, enabling a deeper connection with our faith and our spiritual well-being. But what does renunciation really mean according to the scriptures? And why is it so essential for our spiritual journey? Well, here's the biblical foundation of renunciation. When we think about renunciation in the Bible, Luke 9:58 stands out. Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. This verse highlights Jesus' choice to live without the ties of earthly comforts. Renunciation from this perspective isn't just about giving up physical belongings, but about embracing a lifestyle of spiritual dedication. Scripture offers us various examples of this concept. One, Jesus called a discipleship. Following Jesus often means setting aside our earthly priorities. In Luke 14.33, we see him urging his followers to renounce all that they have to be his disciples. It's about choosing a path where faith leads over material wealth. In Paul's letters, particularly in 1 Timothy 6, 7 through 8, Paul reminds us that we bring nothing into this world and can take nothing out, encouraging a life of contentment, with what we have in the moment. The scriptures presents renunciation not as a loss, but as a deliberate choice for spiritual richness. Through these teachings, we grasp the idea that real abundance is found not in what we own, but in our spiritual health. The purpose of renunciation is important to understand. Why is renunciation so vital for our spiritual health and growth? In our journey towards sobriety and healing, renunciation helps us let go of the behaviors and thoughts that keep us trapped. Uh, remember, in one of Paul's epistles, he says that we are to take every thought captive through Jesus Christ. And in that, we see that aspect of renunciation. And so, in our journey towards sobriety and healing, renunciation helps us let go of the behaviors and thoughts that keep us trapped. Here are some key points to consider. First, spiritual clarity. Letting go of attachments allows us to see our path with a clearer vision. We start understanding what truly matters beyond our immediate desire and cravings. Inner peace. By renouncing what holds us back, 
we create space for inner peace. Imagine a garden overgrown with weeds. Once removed, the flowers have room to flourish. Strengthens our faith because renunciation strengthens our commitment to God by showing our willingness to trust in his provisions rather than our own understanding. Renunciation serves as a profound step towards spiritual maturity. For those of us seeking recovery and healing, it's about finding that balance, learning to live with dependence on God rather than on the fleeting pleasures of the world. This deliberate act of letting go becomes a cornerstone in rebuilding a life focused on faith and inner freedom. So what's the go in renunciation? When we think of renunciation, we often visualize stepping away from things that once defined us. It's about walking a new path, one that feels both daunting yet essential for inner peace. Renunciation isn't a passive action. It's a firm step forward. Like climbers ascending a peak, we must gear up for the journey. We take that one decisive step, our go, and embrace the liberating yet sometimes challenging path of letting go. And so how do we respond to the call of Jesus? Well, imagine standing at a crossroads in life, hearing a powerful call that resonates deep within. The call of Jesus invites us to embark on a transformative journey of faith. But responding to this call calls for a precise, unwavering decision. We might often hesitate, wondering if we are ready to follow with our whole heart. Yet Jesus challenges us to step forward with confidence, refusing to be anchored by the past. Like a runner poised at the starting line, the start gun fires, and we must spring into action. Our commitment to follow Christ requires a swift and firm decision, leaving no room for the buts or wins. Allowing hesitation to creep in may weigh us down like a heavy backpack, hindering our ability to move. Instead, responding to Jesus means shedding doubt and embracing the promise of change. Can we answer this call without looking back? The challenge of letting go. Well, letting go of our past is not always easy. We may find ourselves holding on to memories, belongings, or even relationships that no longer serve us. These are like anchors that keep us moored to old habits and ways of thinking. The challenge lies in recognizing what's holding us back and having the courage to release it. This process may feel like standing at the edge of a, div of a diving board, looking down into unknown waters. The fear of what lies beneath and the comfort of staying put and the comfort of staying put may keep us stuck. Yet, just like the exhilaration of a leap brings freedom, letting go allows us to find new strength and clarity. Often this requires introspection, a journey into our own thoughts and emotions to identify what's truly important. Creating a mental list may help identify areas to address. Old habits, where we ask ourselves which behaviors serve us and which do not. Possessions, considering what items add value to our lives and what simply takes space. Relationships, evaluate connections and nurture those that uplift. Are we ready to free ourselves and experience that peace that comes with true renunciation? Letting go might be challenging. However, it's also incredibly rewarding. It opens up new paths and allows us to experience life in its simplest, most joyous form. And here's how renunciation and recovery works. In the journey of recovery, renunciation plays a vital role. It is a powerful tool that helps us let go of what no longer serves us. By renouncing harmful behaviors and embracing change, individuals in sobriety may rebuild and reshape their lives. And here, let's go ahead and look at how the act of renunciation supports recovery and transformation. It begins by renouncing harmful behaviors. When we, walk, when we talk about recovery, giving up harmful habits is a must. These old ways of living might feel familiar, yet they ho often hold us back from true healing. Whether it's substance abuse, negative thinking, or codependent relationships, renunciation involves a conscious decision to leave these behind. Imagine carrying around a heavy backpack full of stones. Each stone represents a harmful behavior. The way it may feel unbearable, by deciding to renounce these habits, we slowly take out each stone making it easier to move forward. Why is this important? Leaving behind what harms us opens the door to healthier choices and opportunities. It allows us to say yes to a future where we are not uh, defined by our past mistakes, but are empowered by the changes we choose to make. 
helps build a new identity because renunciation isn't just about giving up the old. It's also about welcoming the new. By letting go of previous identities that revolved around addiction, we create space to develop a new sense of self. This new identity is in line with our values, dreams, and sobriety goals. Think of it as starting a journey with a blank canvas. In this new chapter, we may paint the life we desire using vibrant colors that reflect who we truly want to be. Creating this new identity involves self-discovery because it's all about figuring out what truly matters to us. It also focuses on setting goals, aiming for achievements that align with our sober life. And then it involves embracing community. Joining support groups that understand and encourage a new path is vital. Renunciation is a courageous step towards a feeling and sober life. It requires honesty and determination, yet it leads us to discover the strength and freedom we always had within. As we renounce what does not nourish us, we find the power to thrive in a life of purpose and joy. And here are the emotional aspects of renunciation. Renunciation is often viewed as an external process. However, its most profound impact lies in the emotional and psychological realms. Letting go of attachments, be it relationships, habits, or beliefs, may stir a whirlwind of emotions. As we journey through recovery from addiction, codependency, or a faith crisis, understanding these feelings is crucial. How may we confront these emotions and build a supportive community around us? Here are some things to consider. Facing difficult emotions, when we choose to let go, we're often confronted with a mix of grief, fear, and uncertainty. It's like being on a roller coaster of emotions, each dip and rise unexpected and intense. How do we handle such turbulence? Acknowledge the grief is the first step. Letting go often means mourning the loss of what was once a part of us. It's okay to feel sadness. It's a natural response to change. Second, accept the fear of the unknown. Embracing renunciation means stepping into uncharted territory. While this may spark fear, it also opens up possibilities for growth and healing. And third, seek emotional balance. Meditation, journaling, or therapy may help stabilize emotions, like maintaining balance on a tightrope. These practices keep us steady. We must remember that these emotions, however overwhelming, are temporary. They are stepping stones on the path to healing and personal growth. And again, it all comes back to finding support and community. Renunciation doesn't have to be a solitary journey. The support of others may act as a lifeline, offering strength and comfort when the emotional waters get choppy. It begins by building a network. Interacting with others who understand our journey may provide profound relief. Whether through support groups or informal gatherings, shared experiences may create powerful bonds. Lean on family and friends. Honest communication with loved ones may enhance mutual understanding. They may be our anchors, offering stability as we navigate change. And then actively participating in those groups, because engaging in community events or activities that foster connection and shared purpose helps us become part of something larger than ourselves and may uplift and encourage us as we uplift and encourage others. The strength of community may turn the isolation of renunciation into a shared journey, a collective movement towards healing and renewal. In connecting with others, we find that we are not alone in our struggles and that support may come from the most unexpected places. Renunciation is more than just a farewell. It's an invitation to find new paths grounded in emotional resilience and collective strength. So this brings us to where we want to embrace the journey of our faith. Renunciation may feel overwhelming. It's a heavy word that implies sacrifice. But what if we choose to see it as an integral part of our spiritual journey, a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block? For those of us recovering from addiction or navigating a crisis of faith, Renunciation becomes a brave statement of intent, a decision to move toward healing and wholeness. It requires courage, but it also offers freedom. At its heart, embracing this journey is about trusting our path, setting new priorities, and undertaking a process of transformation that involves faith and trust. Cultivating trust in God means that when we trust in God, things change. 
Imagine walking a winding road unsure of where it leads, but believing that every step is guided with love. This kind of trust provides a strong foundation during renunciation. It's about letting go of the need to control every outcome and allowing divine wisdom to steer us. This is the first part of the serenity prayer, folks, where it talks about having the wisdom to understand the things that I am not able to change and the courage to change the things that I need to change in my life. Right there in the very first part of the serenity prayer is a declaration of renouncing our old way of thinking, our old way of doing things. So consider these elements when cultivating trust. Letting go of control. Sometimes holding on tight may make us feel secure, but true faith involves releasing our grip. Embracing uncertainty. Life is unpredictable, yet trusting that God has a plan creates a space where uncertainty becomes an adventure rather than a fear. And then finding comfort in prayer. Prayer is our conversation with God. It's a refuge where we may express worries and find peace. Knowing that we are not alone in this journey encourages us to surrender to our burdens and trust that brighter days lie ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. Setting new spiritual goals. After renouncing old habits, setting new spiritual goals helps to fill the void with purpose and focus. Like planting seeds in fertile soil, these goals allow new growth to emerge. Having clear, actionable objectives ensures that our progress isn't just marked by what we've left behind, but by what we are moving towards. And so to set meaningful spiritual goals, first reflect on personal values. Take time to consider what truly matters to us. What values do we want to embody? And the scripture tells us what those values are that we are wanting to adopt. They are the fruit. They become the fruit. And so we need to learn how to express those values. We learn, need to learn how to develop those characters. And so those, the fruit of the spirit is manifested through us. Identifying specific actions. Break down these values into specific actions or habits. It could be dedicating time for meditation, service, or gratitude. And then again, it comes back to celebrating small wins. Recognizing even minor achievements helps to build a momentum. Each step forward, however small, contributes to our spiritual journey. Setting such goals offers a roadmap to a life more aligned with our true selves, helping us to transform renunciation into rejuvenation. Together, as we trust in God and set new goals, we foster a path of healing and hope, a journey that is deeply personal and collectively empowering. And so here's some concluding thoughts that I want to leave for you today. Uh, as you meditate, as you go out through your day, um, whenever you're listening to this podcast, and hopefully you're taking some time to just write down your thoughts and, and reflect on this, because that's what you know my hope and goal is for you to do is to take this information meditate upon it read the scriptures and then go into prayer with god enter your your closet and pray privately seeking his guidance and his wisdom and if you're going to ask the holy spirit if you're going to ask heavenly father to reveal to you the things that are holding you back you might want to consider taking some time to prepare your heart and mind because that stuff is going to be brought up it's going to be exposed to the light and then it's up to you to make the decisive action to whether or not hold on to those or renounce them and do what needs to be done to overcome as christ has overcame through faith and courage as you press forward with steadfastness and faith in jesus christ so by exploring the journey of renunciation Hopefully, it illuminates a path toward deeper healing and genuine transformation. By choosing to let go, we strip away the layers that hold us back, allowing for true connection with ourselves and our faith. Each step toward renunciation is a step forward, step toward freedom, encouraging us to abandon what binds us. In this journey, action becomes the key. We ask ourselves, what may we release today to grow tomorrow? Let's commit to the pursuit of a life that isn't defined by past pain, but by newfound purpose, 
For those of us on a path of recovery and renewal, embracing renunciation isn't an end. It is a beginning. Together, as fellow travelers, we may inspire change by sharing personal successes and encouraging others to recognize their potential. The call is clear, and the choice is ours to make. Uh, one final thought that I want to say about this, and this just came to mind when I was looking over this and getting this ready to go to present to you. Um, the thing that really stands out is it brings me back to Matthew 16, and there's a lot within Matthew 16 um, from a doctrinal perspective, from an exegetical perspective. However, from a spiritual application, one phrase stands out to mind, that Christ gave Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. To do what? To bind on earth what and what Peter and the apostles will bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. And so it's this authority to bind on earth that and, and to bind in heaven and to loose on earth, to loose in heaven. Well, the reason that came to mind is because when we are renouncing something, we are letting it go. We are loosening the, the shackles. We're loosening those bands that are holding us back. And in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly realm, what we loose here on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. The, the heart of unforgiveness, when we renounce that heart of unforgiveness and embrace and take on a heart of forgiveness, we are releasing, we're loosening the, the heart of unforgiveness in a temporal sense, but we're also doing so in a spiritual sense. And then we are binding ourselves to develop a heart of forgiveness. And so there's this binding and loosening that is interwoven in our lives in recovery. And I didn't think about that until I was going through it and meditating upon that. That It's just another confirmation that brings more depth and nuance to understanding the scriptures and how we can take those and apply them into our lives. Because that's exactly what we are doing in the process of recovery. That's what we are doing in the process of healing from the hurts and the hangups and the habits that we have been struggling with, that we've been wrestling with. That finally we let it, let it go. And as we let go, we're loosening that out of our lives. And it's loosening in the spiritual realm it's loosening in in the heavens and then we are binding ourselves in commitment to following christ and so that binding and it's a covenantal relationship and you'll always hear me speak about the covenantal relationship because that's what it's supposed to be our relationship with christ is supposed to be one that is of a covenant it's a binding aspect that we are recognizing and identifying ourselves and in a doctrinal perspective it comes to a place understanding the very significant importance of baptism because it's not just a mere public profession of one's faith it is really you if you look at the history of baptism um my one go-to when i get into a doctrinal discussion with somebody on this is surreal of jerusalem because in that ritual of baptism the person is renouncing their past lives that person is renouncing the hold that the adversary has on them that person is renouncing all things that are no longer going to be conducive to a disciple of christ You're no longer going to be conducive to a person who is going to walk in faith and pressing forward with steadfast faith in jesus christ and that through the act of baptism it binds us to Christ's death. It binds us to Christ's burial. It binds us to Christ's resurrection. And thereby, as we are binding ourselves to Christ it, here on earth through baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, we are binding ourselves to him in the heavenly realm. And at the same aspect, we are loosening the, the grip of sin. We're loosening the, the old man. We're letting that go. And as that is being loosed here on earth, it's being loosed in heaven. And that just substantiates more and more information about that. And I don't want to turn this podcast into more of a doctrinal um, thing because it's more focused on helping people find healing. But th that is symbolism to what the process of recovery is supposed to be about. Is that it is about bringing ourselves out of the old way of thinking, out of the old lifestyles that we have 
endured and struggled with and wrestling with. And my friend, if you are struggling right now, if you're wrestling with things that are heavy, that is just you just feel so heavy and overwhelmed. I've been there. Many people have been there. You go into the rooms and you hear people's story. You are able then to connect with them. The choice is yours, though, and it has to be a very decisive choice because if you're not ready, then you're not ready. And God will always meet you where you're at, where you are at. And so the moment you're ready to come out of your dysfunction, to come out of your addiction and walk the path of recovery, to walk the path of restoration, to walk the path of healing and to receive Christ into your heart and mind and soul, you will discover that yes you will be forgiven of your sins that is promised yes you will then be justified through jesus christ that is promised what happens after that though is entirely up to you and if you're still going to hold on to the old self if you're still going to hold on to the the desires of the flesh and you're not willing to or ready to let them go then you're really going to struggle in your discipleship and this is the reason why 12-step recovery says that we are to take one step at a time that we are to to take one moment for what it is and just focus on that moment not future tripping what may or may not happen in the future and not looking at the past and and being concerned with and overwhelmed with and and that we are to focus on the here and now what is the moment is um, as I say in recovery rooms, if you have one foot in the future, one foot in the past, you're crapping on the present. And so this renunciation brings into experiencing the moment for what it is through mindfulness, through this mindful journey, being crucified through Jesus Christ. Because it's no longer I who lives, it's because he lives within me and we want to make room for him. And he is when he comes in and he resides and the Holy Spirit comes in, the Holy Spirit's going to get to work right away. He's going to get to work, and he's going to start bringing things to your mind. He's going to start bringing things to your heart. And it's better to go with the flow. I'm telling you from personal experience, it's better to go with the flow and let the Holy Spirit work what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do in cleaning the house so that Christ has a place to reside because he comes in the holy spirit comes in and cleans house he flips over the tables that need to be flipped over he chases out the money changers that need to be chased out and we then are able to walk with newness of life through jesus christ pressing forward with steadfast and faith heavenly father thank you for this wonderful opportunity to bring this message it is always inspiring to learn more and more about your truths more and more about your scriptures and gain a greater insight into where I'm at and hopefully others are getting the same insight as they're listening and I pray for those who are listening who are struggling with their faith who are struggling in their recovery who are struggling to make sense of what's going on that whatever is holding you back whether it's pornography whether it's alcohol whether it's drug use whether it's you're involved in a toxic relationship and you're struggling to make sense of it because you are fearful that if you leave that there's nothing for you and that is a a a very real fear and when you step out of faith our heavenly father is going to bring you into a place we just be willing to accept it and we move into that space where we can find healing and and know what the next steps is and we may not know what those next steps are yet we are always guided by his presence and his love and his grace and his mercy and hopefully that we can continue to grow that we can continue to keep our eyes focused on you on the things that matter as we continue to strive to turn our lives and wills over to your care as we understand you in that moment, as we come to know you through that relationship that we have through Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, thank you for all the things that you've done for us, all the things that you are going to do for us, and the victories that we will experience in our lives going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much for this. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that there are several ways that you can support Sacred Sobriety, A Path for the Soul. One, if you're listening to this on YouTube, 
go ahead and hit the alert button to get notified of all new podcasts that are coming. Um, it will not only alert you to the podcast for Sacred Sobriety, there's other content that I have that is more of the LDS faith. And we're going through the Come Follow Me Book of Mormon studies, and I have some videos on that as well. As well as getting connected to some of the live streams that I'm hoping to do some more of. And also, you get alerts to the the content for Mindful Latter-day Saint Christian Living and Apologetics. And hopefully, I will be able to do that podcast as well. I've already got one episode of, of that up uh, with regards to that. Um, so... Drop your thoughts in the comments section for this p- podcast. Share with me your ideas of renunciation, what you're struggling with. How does this help you today in, in approaching the scriptures, approaching recovery, or approaching sobriety? And then, as always, you can always follow this on iHeart, Amazon Music, and Spotify. And you can go to the main place where this podcast is hosted, which is podbean.com. And so those are the ways that you can support my efforts. Uh, The other way is to, you know, go and join, become part of the Patreon community and sponsor me on Patreon. A lot of this content is also going to be published over there. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm actually publishing the written content that I go over on the podcast over there over at patreon and you can have access there it also allows you to engage in discussion more um over there as well and you can get a seven day free trial when you sign up for the first time after that the other ways that you can support is of course financially you know making a donation making a gift i'm not asking much however what it does is it helps offset some of the costs to continue with the Podbean platform because it does cost money. Um, it helps pay for the cost for the web, uh, web WordPress uh, platform as well. And so through your financial gifts and donations, it also allows me to continue to present relevant content for you to encourage you, edify you, and lift you up and inspire you to live a mindful, meaningful, crucified life through Jesus Christ, wherever you're at in your walk and faith, as we all are fellow travelers pressing forward with steadfast faith in Jesus Christ. Have a good day, and I will see you next time.